What's going on, smart people? It is that time of the semester. It's really become a tradition at this point. Every semester I sit down, I make a Google Calendar, and I just throw my whole schedule into there. For those of you who are new or you just accidentally clicked on this video but you're super immersed, uh, I don't throw assignments and stuff into here. I would have to update it too frequently. I just put that in a planner. But yeah, so for this whole thing, I put my course load. Really, more or less, it's where do I have to be every week? That goes into this Google Calendar. If you don't know how to make one, you just click on this little icon right here, these nine dots, and you click on Google Calendar. It's super simple to make, and it helps me organize where I have to be, and it also tells me when I'm about to be late for something. Uh, right now, this is from last semester. I'm just gonna delete this forever all events, this and this and following events, there we go. Uh, the sad thing about this is I've always enjoyed making these, but this will probably be the last one that I do, simply because this is my last semester of classes, more or less. I'm sure there will be one or two that I take after, after this semester, but, you know, that's the best part, I think, of these little videos, is seeing what classes I'm taking uh, and talking about them, and since that'll be missing, uh, it's better to let good things die. That's probably not the same, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm only taking two classes this semester. It is already loads more manageable than, the, than last semester. Last semester was completely brutal. In some ways it was good, in some ways it was just really bad. It was good because I learned more last semester than I ever have before, because it was for classes that were relatively new to me, like high energy particle physics and nuclear physics. Um, but the workload was just insane. And already I can tell that this semester is just, it's different. It's, frankly, it's easier. Uh, the first class that I'm taking, let's go ahead and get this started. It is E&M Part 2. Come on. Let's move you up. Uh, I always forget how to do this. There's like more options. Yes. More options. What's E&M? It should probably be yellow, right? It does repeat. Monday, I think you can customize this. It's Monday and Wednesday. Repeat every week. Monday and Wednesday ends never okay and when, where's the option to give me a color oh there it is come on and the title where's the title there we go e and m two cool so this class it's the second installment for electromagnetism now now things are exciting because things are moving honestly it's it's not nearly as bad as people made it sound. People just want to make it sound like Jackson E&M is this horrible thing. And it's not the, it's not an easy read by any means, but it's not, it's not as bad as people, people really make it out to sound. So if you go through Jackson E&M, you know, don't listen to people. Feel it out for yourself. I think if it's your first semester of grad school and you're thrown right into E&M, yeah, that would be a lot more challenging. But since this is my second year of classes and I'm getting thrown into it, it's it's like, oh, okay, I've been prepared for this. It's like, no, Green's functions aren't anything new to me. Um, but yeah, so so for E&M 2, this is a cool class so far. So we finished up like the whole time-dependent field stuff. We went over the Maxwell stress tensor. Now I think we're getting into diffraction and things. And I say that this has been relatively easy so far. I have heard that this is where stuff gets a lot harder, so I might be biting my words here in just a couple weeks. But that is E and M2. It starts at 9, which is kind of early for me, I'll be honest. But in last semester, it started at 10.30, so I don't know what gives. Um, I'm also... Mondays are super easy for me. The only class that I have is E&M. It starts at 9 to 10.30, so in principle, I could be done at 10.30 with my day. Uh, but I'm also the SI, the Supplemental Instructor for Modern Physics. This is like a, an introduction to relativity and quantum mechanics, really, for, for, um, for undergraduates. Now, I'm not the official instructor for the class. I'm the Supplemental Instructor. So the students go to class, and then here's another like one-credit thing where you can just do practice problems, and it's almost like a, uh, like a free A, like as long as you show up and you do the practice problems. But I'm in charge of writing those problems. Um, and just to make sure that I know what the students know or don't know, I actually attend the lecture as well. It's also just a really cool lecture, and it's taught by my advisor, so it's it's a win-win. But that starts... When does that start? Oh, it's 9 to 10.15, isn't it? I've been lying to you guys this whole time. I'm so sorry. This will never happen again, probably. Uh, there we go. So I think that starts at 10.30. So let's go ahead and start this. This is every week, so modern is... I'm not going to put fizz. I mean, what else, what other class would it be, right? 
Um, so let's go to the more options. What color should modern physics be? I get that I chose colors wrong last time. Uh, modern physics, modern. What's a modern color? Sage. Sage is modern, right? That sounds pretty modern. Okay, modern physics goes from 1030 to 1145. And so they just finished up uh, the section on special relativity. So like I've said, this, this semester is going to be much more manageable than last semester, which means hopefully I can make a lot more videos. The last couple weeks was a bit of an exception because since I, I am the SI and it's taught by my advisor, he had to go to CERN for the week for like some birthday party thing. Um, so in his absence, I gave two lectures on special relativity after they were already introduced to it. So I had to prepare like a bunch of notes on uh, for, for my lectures. The first one, I really just derived the expressions for relativistic energy and momentum. And then I introduced vectors by how their components transform because I couldn't resist. And the second lecture was all on four vectors. And then there was like an example at the end. But I had to prepare all the notes for that. My advisor and I got to talking and he was like, I think it's really hard to give someone else's talk. So feel free to use his PowerPoints, but if I want to make my own, I'm free, like, feel free to do so. So that's what I ended up doing. So the past couple of weeks were just a little uh, hectic just because I spent a lot of time on those and, and things like that. Um, I forgot to make this recurring. Could you tell that I've done this before? Uh, edit? Edit event. There we go. Monday and Wednesday. Does repeat. Okay. Monday, Wednesday. And there we go. So typically, I, some of this is going to be a little bit incomplete because when it comes to meetings with my advisors, those aren't set in stone. Uh, it's There's less structure, I guess. So it's really when I've done stuff, I meet with them, or if I have questions, I just knock on their door. To some people, that probably sounds terrible. I, it works, though. It really does. But anyways, uh, normally what we might do is we'll meet right after lunch on either Monday or Wednesday, so he will do his thing, he'll get lunch, and then we'll normally meet after that. So that'll typically be around one o'clock, but that's not necessarily a weekly thing, so I'm not gonna put that in the schedule. But I think that that sums it up for Monday, Wednesday. Now the other class that I'm taking, I'm only taking two, the other class is computational physics, and this starts at 12. So let's go ahead and put this here, computational. This is recurring, so let's start, um, does repeat, and it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> I forgot that Google doesn't subscribe to the whole when or Thursday is our thing that freaked me out for a second. So it goes from 12 to 1.15, uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. What should, let's see, what should computational physics be? I almost think black because it's command line, maybe? Let's do black. Or graphite, whatever. Everything's a modern color. Uh, cool. So that's, that's, um, uh, so that's computational physics. For this class, I really like it so far. It is, it's a good amount of work, actually. The homeworks take me a long time, but I get a lot out of them. And each problem has a point. Like you can you can see what the exercise for the problem is supposed to make sure that you're you're becoming familiar with, uh, which I, I really appreciate. So for example, in the last one, we may be expressing functions by you know writing out their Taylor series or developing a, a recursion relation for the function and seeing where the benefits are. It's like obviously, sorry, not obviously, but for large x, the Taylor series is is not ideal because for one, you have to include more terms of the Taylor series, and two, for large x, you have that x raised to larger and larger power, so you're at risk of overflow. So you might just end up getting not a number as your answer. And when you develop this recursion relationship, uh, it makes it so that you do get something finite at the end, but as we found, you still have to be a bit more careful because you'll get, for these large x values, you might get something finite, but it's like nonsense finite, so you still have to do some work. Uh, but, it, you know, so far I'm really liking the class. It's very engaging. Half the class is him asking us questions, which is pretty cool. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of right now is uh, the class is pretty much split between grad students and undergraduates. It's one of those 400, 500 level courses. And that's not the part that I don't like, but 
if you're a grad student and you have like a degree in physics, odds are you've taken a computational physics course before or you've taken CS classes or done some kind of numerical uh, methods. You have that kind of experience in your life. So a lot of the questions that we may be asked, we may know the answer to not because we're thinking of the answer and have just arrived to the conclusion. We know the answer because we just already knew the answer. And I'm not a fan of people answering questions because they just already knew the answer. And if you mix undergrads into it, it kind of seems like it's maybe grad students setting the pace for the course, which doesn't really seem too fair to them. But we'll see, It's the semester's still, still fresh, so we'll see how it goes. Wow, is this it? No, this is almost it, but it's not it. <laughs> okay, that scared me. So, uh, Thursday at, right after computational at 1.30 is when I hold my SI. So that's for this modern physics class, so I'll write I don't know, maybe three or four problems for the students to work on that are kind of challenging. You know, something that's not just a bunch of simple problems that gives them this false sense of, yeah, I understand this now, but it's challenging to where, you know, you may you may see something that's more general that wasn't in that other special case that you wouldn't have known to ask a question about. So this is a modern SI. Oh man, but Sage is already a modern color. What's going to be even more modern than that. Uh, so this is just going to be, sorry, it does repeat just once a week. Daily, yeah. Weekly on Thursday. <clears throat> okay, 1.30 to 2.45. And let's see, so for modern SI, SI, so I'm helping people. Helping people. So that's like, What's a, what's a color that makes you think like, oh, that that color would help me? Probably banana. <laughs> flamingo, why not? You're flamingo. Um, okay, so yeah, so for modern SI, we just they have an hour and 15 minutes to work on a problem set that I've gone through. And then I try to save some time towards the end so that we can go through them. And uh, this week, since the problems were particularly more abstract and difficult, if they were on four vectors, I typed up notes or uh, solutions for them as well. So I, I like this. This feels, I prefer SI, <coughs> excuse me, much more to being a regular TA. This just feels more mine, I guess. Okay, and then, so Thursdays, if there was a busy day, I guess it's Thursday, but it's still not too bad, because I mean, it starts at noon. But at three o'clock until four, I also have tutoring. And I've, um, I've gotten emails lately. I haven't responded to many. Uh, because as I've said, these past few weeks have been, oh no, it's just an hour, have been a bit hectic. But I, I, I don't know if it's this that gives people the impression that I'm still doing like the Skype tutoring, but I'm not doing that anymore. Um, just for those of you who are wondering. So tutoring, uh, helping people. Oh, I already did sage, lavender, why not? Those are, those are like the same color to me. Let's make it more distinct, purple. Okay, tutoring is kind of self-explanatory. We go into this tutoring room with another like TA and students who are taking physics classes can come in and ask us questions. Uh, and typically the only people that show up are those who are taking like mastering physics. And I love seeing them in here because one, mastering physics sucks and there's a huge incentive for people to cheat on the homework. So seeing people actually come in and ask for help when there's a million problems that you have to solve for it as well. That's pretty cool. It's, it's reassuring that some people still care. But as it stands, this is the schedule for the semester. And as I've said, there's also going to be various meetings with advisors. I have two research advisors. One of them is the instructor for modern. One was my old professor for quantum mechanics. So, <clears throat> and there's there's kind of two two projects that we're working on right now. One still has to do with the energy momentum tensor, which I've talked about before. The other one is, um, it's new, and I don't know how to explain it well enough. Uh, but if you're interested in the w direction that my research is heading, there's a cool resource. It's, resource, it's like a, a paper, but it's a lecture series that was given. It's called An Introduction to Spin-Dependent Deep and Elastic Scattering by Manohar. And it seems very comprehensive, and this is kind of what I'm getting into. So it talks about, you know, the hadronic tensor, factorization, twist, uh, how is a 
cross-section sensitive to spin, those kinds of things. So that's what I'm currently going down the rabbit hole of. This is actually what I gave my presentation on for high energy physics. So for that class, we had a final, but we also had a final presentation. And uh, I gave it on the theoretical background of spin-dependent structure functions. But that's, that's I'm going to end it here. That is the schedule for the semester. Uh, for E&M, we have homework pretty much once every week slash once every week and a half. And the same thing goes for uh, computational physics. Computational homeworks take a lot longer than the Jackson E&M. As of now, we've only had two, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it with that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you don't have a Google, Google Calendar, I highly recommend just making one. It's super, it's nice to get like a text from Gmail that's like, hey, you have E&M right now. <laughs> so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.